Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the GC Gradia Plus webinar. My name is Brian, and once again, I'll be this evening's host. As mentioned last week, I'm a qualified dental technician with over 20 years of industry experience. I've had the pleasure of working for Rack Milners for the past five years. Once again, I need to thank you, fellow dental professionals and delegates who have taken time out of your schedule to watch this evening's webinar. I would also like to take this time job and opportunity to thank John Maloney of GC UK for not only assisting us putting together this series of webinars with Bob Els, but also for the amazing promotions that we will be running in conjunction with the webinars. Once again, prior to Bob taking center stage, I need to address a couple of housekeeping items. Please feel free to pop any questions you may have into the questions or chat tab on the right of your screen. We welcome all your related questions and we'll answer them as we go through the webinar. There will also be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. The more questions asked, the more we all learn. I had a few questions about the certificates of attendance over the past week for last week's webinar. Certificates are indeed being issued to delegates that attend the entire webinar from start to finish. These you should receive in your inbox within the next few days. Right, without further ado, let me briefly introduce our two GC key opinion leaders. Firstly, Michael Lazarevic, Michael is a born and bred South African, hailing out of the town of Somerset West near Cape Town. Michael graduated with a BTEC degree in dental technology in 2001. As a GEC key opinion leader, Michael has presented and given courses on a range of GC initial materials over the past few years. Most recently, Michael presented and did a hands-on course to a full house at the Namibian Dental Association Annual Congress in Swakopmund last year. This obviously took place prior to the current pandemic we're facing worldwide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Michael has worked alongside and been mentored by the highly talented Guido Dingermans for the past 15 years. Michael holds the position of specialist dental ceramist as well as lab owner at Ceramident Dental Laboratory. Michael heads up a team of specialist analog and digital dental laboratory technicians specializing in all aspects of crown and bridge work. Right, Mr. Bob Bosman Elst. Bob Elst will be presenting it to you live from his kitchen in Belgium this evening. Isn't it amazing that we are able to host events such as this with world-class presenters sitting on the other side of the globe? Bob has previously presented to a few sold-out LISI courses for us in South Africa. These took place in 2018. More recently, Bob was to have joined us in Johannesburg at the Wright Milners Congress this year, but due to COVID, our Congress had to unfortunately be placed on ice. As I've mentioned, Bob hails from the city of Antwerp in Belgium. Bob qualified as a dental technician in 1991. Throughout Bob's career, Bob has participated as both a lecturer and participant in well over 40 master dental technology courses. Over the past few years, Bob has grown his passion for mentorship and values the concept of lifelong learning very highly. I hereby hand over to Bob and Michael. Michael joining us from his dining room in Somerset West and Bob will be joining from his kitchen in Antwerp. Please feel free to grab yourself a coffee or a refreshment of your choice, sit back, relax and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike and Bob. Thanks, Brian. Um, great to be a part of this again. Um, last week's uh, <clears throat> webinar was truly a, a, a world-class success. And uh, thanks to to you and, and Celeste and the Wright Milner's team for organizing it. It was really fantastic. And the results and the and the, the, the um, feedback we got was, was, was highly positive and it was greatly informative. Sadly, this year, you know, Bob, we won't be sharing a table in Leuven um at our meeting but uh i'm sharing my 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 i'm not in the dining room tonight i'm in my in my child's bedroom and uh, i'll be sharing this table with you bob and uh it's an honor and a privilege as brian has said to have you again and uh and to present us your your gc gradia so bob uh, welcome and uh, great to have you again thank you so much michael thank you also brian and thank you Milners and thank you John and everybody it's a real pleasure to do this also me I'm not in my kitchen today in Antwerp but I'm uh, in Leuven at the desk of my partner uh, so something uh, different I want to thank you all the participants for taking the time late evening to share this webinar and today it will be about an hour and after the last questions i can show you a movie it will take about 15 minutes but that's after the question and answer you can also find that movie on youtube 
that's a YouTube channel, not the other U channel. And then you just type in Gradia Plus uh, Flask Technique, and then you, you can find that movie. So I will guide you through the webinar. There will be some time slots to do your question and answers. If you have a question that you want to discuss right away, because the picture wants you to do that, please ask and Michael will take over and we will uh, do that question. Okay, so thanks. I will put on the presentation and then we can start and we will see each other after the presentation. <clears throat> so for everybody that was also last week uh, in the presentation, I'm sorry, but it's the same picture and I'm still Bob Elst and I was still born in 71. I am still owner of a consultant lab named Ecom Aesthetic Constructions. And as a hobby, uh, let's say uh, my core business is a technical trainer and support and ADFA specialists for uh, GC Benelux. This is our home office. This is the training center of GC Europe. It's uh, in Leuven. And if you are one of those times in the other part of the world, please be welcome in our training center. It's a really nice environment. Michael can uh, tell you all about this. It's, it's really nice to, to work in this part of, the, of our uh, business. It's not uh, common that we can do this. So uh, I'm very uh, humble that I can do this and uh, have this as my uh, home office. Okay. And now it should work. I'm sorry. My presentation is blocked. One moment, please. I have to share it again. That's the problem with live webinars. Sometimes technology is not working, like now. Doesn't do anything. I'm closing down PowerPoint and I will start it up. Give me just one minute, please. Hi, guys. I think um, while uh, while um, Bob just sorts out the, the technical issues, um, like Ryan said, please feel free to ask any questions you need. Um, it's not often we have someone of this caliber um, talking about life experiences and everyday work. So. Uh, please feel free to post any questions on the um, on the chat uh, uh, segment of the of the webinar, and uh, we'll gladly answer. If I can't, um, Job is a specialist in Gradia, uh, me so more on the on the initial and the, the ceramic range. But um, any questions we can answer, we will do so. So post the questions, and um, you know we'll uh, we'll post them at question time. Yep. Looks like Bob's almost up and ready. Okay, we are live again. I'm so sorry for this uh, technical issue, but uh, sometimes that happens. Yeah, there are always gremlins. Okay, Bob, back to you. Thank you. So tonight we're talking about Gradia Plus. And what's really, really important to know and to understand Gradia Plus, it's not a composite anymore. You will see it has lots of uh, glass fillers. So because of the content of the glass fillers, it's more like a hybrid ceramic than a composite. So if you tell your dentists, I can do it in composite, we all know what the answer will be. But if you say we have a hybrid ceramic that we can work on implant jobs, then we are talking a different ball game. The GC Gradia, is uh, already in the market for, I think, from now on uh, about 18 years, also for implant works and inlays and onlays. And after that time, it was time to uh, do something else to reduce the, the stock, to reduce the, 
the difficulties of applying uh, the composite and the technicians that were working with Gradia for several years, me included, we had to make a wish list. And that wish list went to the mentor of initial, the one in the white shirt, that's Michael Brusch. If you have the, the opportunity to follow a course with Michael, please do. That guy is really, really nice. He's, he's from Germany, but he, he also has humor. So it's uh, very, very uh, special to have a, a German guy who make jokes, but uh, it does exist. And his knowledge and the way he does aesthetics, it's unbelievable. It's really a gentleman in our profession. And sometimes we have to think outside of the, bo uh, of the box. If we just implement some new things and just go on the flow of history, then it will improve a little bit, but we won't make it very special. And with Gradia Plus, we really tried to do something totally different. The first thing that's different, we have several sets that's uh, regarding the way you like to work. So last week I told you also, I don't do manuals and I don't do, you have to do this and you have to do that. No, you have to try it, test it, fail, and then make yourself the question, what suits me the best? So we have a layer set, we have a layer set pro, and the one body set. Those are the three major sets. And in the layer sets, we have heavy body stuff. And in the one body, that's, uh, that's uh, flowables. But the flowables, the one body, it's kind of a transparent dentin. So the thinner it goes, the more transparent it is. And it looks like it's, it has dentin and enamel, but in fact, it's just one color that you implement. This is the color chart. Like you see, uh, the upper left, the opaque, we have the O base, it's pure white, and then the A, the B, the C, and the D. It's always the most darkest color, and then you have to dilute it with the O, with the white. That gives us the opportunity not to have uh, so much uh, syringes as in, the, as in the past, but you can implement your own color with the O base and the main color. Then the paste heavy bodies. You see, we don't have all the colors in the Vita scale. We have to know that the Vita scale is from the 1950s. That's really nice, nice cars, jukeboxes, but the technology is a little bit further. And we saw also that several colors were never or almost none used in the lab, like a C4, for example. But due to the colors that we have, and the luster paints, we can create every color that you need. We have the enamels, we have enamel light, enamel dark, the pearl enamel, and the CLF. Also, the people from last week know that uh, I really like the CLF, so that's uh, the same thing for the Gradia Plus. The opacious dentine, and then the paste light bodies, we have the base, and then the effect layers, the inlays, and the bleach. On the right side, you see the gum, the gum opaque. I want to tell you that I'm not in front of the gum opaque myself because I never saw a pink skull. So if you find me a pink skull, I will start to use it. But for, for as long as that doesn't happen, I will try to use my denting, uh, my, yes, my denting opaque color. And on top of that, I will make my gum colors. I think it's not that hard and it looks better. And in some light ranges with uh, the gum opaque, you, you can have a kind of a green implementation of color and that you don't have with uh, dentin opaques. But if you like to use gum opaques, please do so. Then we have the light bodies and the heavy bodies. They should be the same color, but there is a little deviation of color and that. Uh, it's because of the filler content. It's a little bit different with the light bodies and the heavy bodies for the gum range, but that's good because then we already have six colors. Very important to know, every light body you can mix together. The only problem is, you know, when we are mixed a hybrid ceramic and between us a composite, 
then you can trap air in between and when is the air coming out on a friday afternoon your partner is having her birthday or his birthday you have to go to the restaurant and then the air bubble pops out and then you have to call and then you are the effort because somebody is not so happy so if you mix the paste uh, the paste uh, syringes please be gentle make sure you don't trap air in between and then you're home safe and then we have the luster paints it's a uh, kind of the luster pastes for ceramic the luster pastes are zirconia based enamel and the luster paint are nano filled composites okay you can use the luster paints for internal painting and external painting and if you do so for the external you have to dilute it with the designated uh, diluting bottle okay the technology really really important it's nano field technology so because of the nano field technology we can talk about the hybrid ceramic and we don't have to talk anymore about the composite and why because you see here the glass filler content for the paste heavy bodies it's 73 and the paste light bodies it's 69 and the gum shades also 69. so you see the the content of fillers and its barium glass it's really really high so what does that mean if you have to grind on your structure or something goes wrong in the dental office and we have to apply a little bit more we have to grind if the dentist can sandblast it he may sandblast and then we need the ceramic primer and with the primer you always have to think on what am i putting it on so the primer that you use is about the product on what are you putting it on so now you're putting it on gradia plus and you need a ceramic primer so that should ring a bell for me as a ceramist also between us i i don't like the stickiness of composites and hybrid ceramics it's a common a common thing with ceramists but nevertheless this works really well definitely with the flask technique and in my lab we never use any ceramics anymore on implant jobs we do a combination of ceramic and uh, gradia plus but we don't do full zirconia or ceramics with uh, titanium or whatever because of the flexural strength the flexural strength of gradia plus is 160 and i think that's the most important thing we are we are all talking about it has to be hard and it has to be tough but we all know that natural enamel it's about 90 flexural strengths 90 90 and if we then put a full zirconia full arch on implants on top of that with the antagonist that's really good i tell you why with the first work that we make the zirconia structures full arch we can go skiing with our family and then because of the the flexural strength of our natural enamel that's only 90 we know that the, uh, in about three to five years regarding the, the muscles of the patient the antagonist will go away and also there we have to implant and make a structure so that's another ski holiday in my belief we are working for the patient and i would like i like to go skiing but for the patient it's better to do something more flexural and i think 160 is the most ideal the full zirconia it's about 1200 flexural strings okay i think that says enough gloss retention and value it's really good and also with this we are selling a long-term solution for the patient okay if the if the patient buys a new car and his tires are worn out he doesn't have to buy a new car he buys new tires and with this it's a little bit the same we we make a, an implant job and he gets new teeth on implant structure and after let's say seven or ten years our natural dentition degraded a little bit gets a little bit more transparent and because of the more transparent natural dentition the color is also deviating so why don't we say to our dentist okay guys 
you buy one time the full arch Gradia Plus solution, and after seven or 10 years, we will redo the Gradia Plus for this price. It's not the same price as the, as the first time because the structure is still good. We only have to make a new layering. And you will see with the uh, flask technique, it will take you from beginning until the end, four hours. Okay, so these are the syringes. The left one is the opaque. Then the heavy body, it's uh, that tip. The light body, you see the designated tip and the luster paints. And this is what it's all about. If we make something on natural dentition, we know we have our, our uh, ligaments. And when we bite and it, it hurts, we know when to stop biting. Because our lig ligaments, we will say, ah, you have to stop. But with the implant job, the implants are in the in the bone and the bone doesn't give anything away. So we don't have any flexural strength, it's, it's steady. So every time the patient bites, it's against the wall. There is no intrusion or extrusion of the structure due to the fact that it's on implant work. So making teeth on implants and on natural dentition, it's a whole different ball game. And we really have to guide our dentists and tell them that because they don't have a clue What's the difference of uh, flexural strength, intrusion, extrusion, and ligaments? Because if we do it the old school way, we have this. And then they call you, ah, we have a problem. And uh, yeah, you know, I make invoices of 10,000 euros a month. You have to redo this for free. It's the same in Belgium. It's a global problem. And that problem we can only fix with communication with our dentists. If we tell them, okay, guys, now we have something like this. And for some certain way, if the patient falls down with his bike or with the beer, and it has a chip of his teeth, with the two structures you see on your screen, you really have a problem. It has to come out. It has to go quick because the patient doesn't have any teeth in his, in his mouth and you are under pressure and most of the time, again, Friday afternoon, birthday of your partner. With Gradia Plus, you can fix that in the mouth. And in Belgium, we can, it's not very legal, but if we ask the dentist to ask us if we can assist them, then we can do that for him in the mouth in about 20 minutes. Grind it, sandblast, primer, ceramic primer, and the layering. And it doesn't have to come out of the mouth. And after half an hour, one hour, talking about the missus and the dog, he's out and he still has his old teeth. Now the workflow. <clears throat> you see our gingiva on the model, it's already transparent. It's uh, also made in ExaClear. Why is that? For the transferring of the light. If we make this gingiva part in true gingiva mask, we have a problem of under curing our product. And if we can do something wrong, then it's really under curing. So if you have ExaClear in your lab, it's so much better to make uh, your gum in ExaClear for the transmission of the light through your model. This is the ExaClear. It's one of the best products that we can provide for uh, our implant jobs. And the first thing we do, is we scan the model. After scanning the model, we will say what kind of implants that we have, the bite registration, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have to talk much about that. And then we do our digital setup. Of course, you can do this also in the manual setup with analog uh, way. And before the ExoCAT was this far, I used the candelar teeth, the advanced candelar teeth with really nice structure. Why? Because after putting it in the flask and duplicate it, you already have your substructure and your, your surface structure. And that makes your life very, very easy. But now with ExoCAT, you can also make a real nice setup. Like I said uh, last week, the library of Jan Haito is one of my favorites. You can, uh, there are two libraries of Jan Haito for free in ExoCAT. 
and I think in Europe for 500 euros, you can get about 70 different types of teeth into your Rayan Haito library. When the setup is done, you say next, 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 and then you can 3D print it in the template of GC. It looks like this. We have template light and we have template medium. Medium, it's about an A3, and the light, it's about a dark A1, a little uh, A2. The combination Asiga printers and GC templates, they, that's a really nice combination. But for the other printers, I'm sure uh, Brian has uh, more than enough knowledge about uh, 3D printers. And I think Henry, of course, also that they will uh, they can guide you to get those uh, workflow methods of the GC template also in your printers at home. But for the best results at this moment, we think that the combination GC template and ASIGA is a winner. <coughs> we print it with our screw holes. Why do we do this? because we will screw it into the mouth. So the structure we made in Exocat will go directly into the mouth. The patient can do his lateral movements, protrusion, retrusion, our horizontal plane, the setup, the length, everything can be adapted, can be checked. And if it's good, we can use this as a wax up. So we use our primary setup in Exocat that we 3D printed in GC template as a wax up, a, a, a fixed wax up, so it can't move. We adapt everything and then we scan it again as indeed a trying. And then uh, regarding that trying, we can make our substructure. And it looks like this. <clears throat> Very important to know, you only have adhesion with your gum with titanium and zirconia. So in my belief, and that's my personal belief, if you work in, uh, on implant level, you can only work with two types of product, and that's zirconia or titanium. Why? If the implant is deep into the gum, you have to have adhesion of the gum onto your substructure. Why? Otherwise, the bacteria will go in, they will get inflammation of the gum, the gum is inflammated, the bone will follow, and everything will retract just by making process of the adhesion. There are no studies at this moment that you have adhesion with peak, pecton, or whatever. Cobalt chrome also not. So please think about the patient, and if you work on implant level, think about working with titanium or zirconia. Different ball game if you work on abutment level. Abutment level, then you work on gingiva level. You will know that the abutments are all in titanium. So then you can choose whatever you want. If you work with peak, picton, uh, cobalt chrome, whatever, everything works because you don't have to work with adhesion of the gum. <clears throat> Sideways. If you do your uh, cutback, you can do a cutback for uh, Gradia Plus until 2.5. But make sure if you do a full cutback on your structure after your uh, wax up, the fish mouth of your posterior region and the incisal edges of your anterior region, if you see, say, minus two and a half, at those regions, it will go further away. Why? Exocat does it like this. Tick, 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 two and a half, two and a half, and then on top of that, two and a half, two and a half. So it means that by turning it, it's more than two and a half. So it's rounded. So if you say two and a half, and that's the maximum, retract your incisal edges and your fish mouths a little bit back to the starting point. Or you say, I do 1.8, and then you smooth your surface the whole way until you are in about two. 2.5. <coughs> then your structure looks like this, like this, and then you are free to start your working area. 
of course, you can always grind a little bit, round it a little bit, make your insides or edges like you want. I won't tell you how how to have a perfect substructure because you like it like this, I like it like that. Ten technicians that sit here, they say every every time a little bit different, but that's good. Okay, a little bit learning from each other, that's always the best thing to do. We make sure that our wax wax let's make it a wax up is back on the model we put it on the model and we put it in the flask make sure that you don't forget to close your screw holes close your screw holes with a darker uh, wax than your uh, dentine wax because then you can find it really fast then after closing it you put your sprue channels for this technique, you need sprue channels of 2.0 diameter. So 2.0 diameter, because if the diameter is a little bit too much, the excess of your material will come back through your screw hole. And that's not a good idea. So when you push your uh, light body, you can close the, the hole of 2.0 with your designated tip. <clears throat> And then you put the top of the flask, you duplicate it with a very transparent, the more transparent it is, the better the end product. Why? If this part, if your upper part is filled with a, a little bit opacious material, then the light will be blocked of your light box. So the more light that go through, the more the the better the polymerization is of your hybrid ceramic are there any questions until now am i going too fast is it okay do i have to stop somewhere please ask what you want hey bob um i got a question from ishmael from yeah. gc uk about yeah. the luster paints the Gradia Plus luster paints. Uh, yes. He wants to know, are they radio opaque? And I'm going to throw in, then what's the difference between Gradia Plus luster paste and optic laser? Now, that's a really good question. It's, uh, it's the same as um, a painter. Some painters like acrylic paint and some painters like um, oil paints. You have to think in uh, optic glaze color as an acrylic paint. Optic glaze color is a clear, very fluid material and mixed with color pigments that you have to mix. And it will always have the feeling of an acrylic paint. The luster paint, it's already the color in the syringe and it has the same, the same idea of an oil paint. Some guys like it fat and some guys like it thin. It's, it's the way that you want it. You can work both for internal paint and external paint. But if you work with luster paste for the external paint, you have to dilute it a little bit with the designated diluting liquid. And okay. to, to be very honest, uh, Gradia Plus is uh, 300 uh, radio opaque. And I, I think that the luster paste will have the same uh, measurements, but I'm not 100% sure but I will uh, look it up and uh, get back to Ish with uh, the final result. But the, the table says 300 uh, radio opacity. And okay. I think Thanks, that's for the full range. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. So the first thing that we do with our strap structure is uh, sandblasting. The harder the material, the harder, the, the bigger the grain, of your sandblast material, your alumina oxide. So you can do this with uh, 110, 150, uh, 240, whatever you like, but watch out for your fingers. Then steam clean. I, I like to steam clean. There are some guys that don't steam clean titanium and that's what the manual says. Because if you steam clean the titanium structure, then you get some kind of an oxide layer on top of that and after steam cleaning and proceed with your with your working flow you have to wait at least 10 minutes 
If you wait for 10 minutes, then you're home free. Nothing will happen. If you sandblast, steam clean, and immediately do your primer, then there could be a problem. Not there will be a problem, but there could be a problem. Why do I like to steam clean? The, the people that know me, they know that I'm an autist. So I want to be sure 100% that there is no grease anymore wherever. And with sandblasting alone, you're never sure because did you touch it with your finger? Is your, uh, your glove completely uh, grease-free? You don't know. But after steam cleaning, I am sure. That's why I like to steam clean. My colleague, Dirk, he says, I never steam clean. Also good. Also good. If your end result is long-term okay, then everything is fine for me. Then you have to apply metal primer Z. <clears throat> the Z is for zirconia. So if you have to uh, primer your zirconia structure, you can also use metal prim primer Z. Of course, we all know that zirconia is a metal oxide. So that's why metal primer Z. In GC, every white bottle is okay to evaporate on air. So you just apply and wait until it's dry. Everything on a black bottle, you have to uh, light cure. But you know, GC is a Japanese company and they have a weird sense of humor. So every lab bottle for evaporating air is whitish. Every black bottle is for uh, light curing. The ceramic primer is also a white bottle, but the ceramic primer for dentists, the unidosis is in a black bottle. So if you say to your dentist, yes, everything in the white bottle is uh, for this and everything in the black bottle is for that, make sure that you tell your dentist, but the ceramic primer unidose in a, in a black bottle is also for a fact a white bottle. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, will, I won't take the blame, call the engineer of Japan. Then for your opaque, so I said in the beginning, we have the O base and then the A, B, C, D. The denting colors are always the darkest and you have to dilute, okay? It's common sense. The only difference that I did for several years and always do until now, my first layer is only the O base. Why? I don't know, because I like it like that, okay? The thicker your material, the harder it's, the thicker and the more opaque your material, the harder it is to light cure it sufficient enough. And I don't have to tell you that the opaque is the most opaque part of everything. So make sure you light cure sufficient. And what do I do? My first layer is in whitish. And then I do three, uh, two other layers. So I do two opaque, op opaque layers instead of only two. Why? Because I feel good with it and I didn't have chipping until now. Okay, so you can do something else while you're waiting for the third layer. Drink yourself a coffee or give your wife a hug. Anything works, but if you can avoid chipping or uh, bad light curing, it's better to do it two times. The manual says you can do it in two. Do whatever you like, but it's the end result that counts, okay? After the second top take layer in this case, and then we did a third layer with a little bit of, uh, let's say, uh, deep tinting colors. <clears throat> After we duplicate it, we can uh, open our flasks. Don't forget, to isolate definitely the green putty or the blue or the pink with a kind of uh, divorce liquid. A divorce liquid, liquid, don't use Vaseline because it's too thick and it's greasy, but use something that's really sufficient enough for two silicones that don't attach to each other. Then you can put on your uh, structure and the first layer that you can do free-handed is a light body and here it was i think orange for getting a little deeper than thin on the cervical area and a little bit in between your uh, dentition and i think you see the effect of the lb orange on your 
left lower part, you can see that color. What I like to use with the first layer, make yourself a, a buccal key that you constantly can check if you are not coming too far because you do this free-handed and after that you put on the flask. But if you have a checkpoint of a, a buccal key, you can see, okay, I, I have enough room for my light body. I also like to work a little bit with opacious dentin on my incisal edges and my uh, fish mouths on my posterior region. And why is that? Like I said in the beginning, the light body dentins are the one bodies are a transparent dentine. So if your structure in the incisal area is a little bit thick, it can show after pushing it down because you didn't use an opacious dentine. Just a little bit, you have your buccal uh, key, you can check, just make it a little bit like you also do in your ceramic work. It's nearly the same workflow as with the ceramic work. Okay, again, also you can add a little bit color in the, in the fissures and in your uh, singular area, but I want to make sure the singular area, it's only, I, in my belief, I'm a colleague, I want to work for a little bit of money. The singular area, it's really nice to do presentations, to put it on the big screen, to show off, to put it on dental, you know on facebook but it doesn't add something on your work because you won't get paid for it also the singular much the most of the patients don't like the singular structure on the palatal side because the tongue feels different things and they will say there's something wrong with my tooth most of the time they want it smooth if you have a movie star that has a camera in her mouth or in his mouth, maybe then you can add some extra work on the cervical uh, singular area. Then <clears throat> it's really important. You start on one way, on one side, you push in the direction with your syringe towards your arch. You start at the, the lowest part. Then if the the light body comes out of the second hole of your uh, sprue channel then you switch you take out the syringe you go to that part that gave a little bit of light body you put with your one finger the last one down you make sure that the, nothing comes out and you keep on pushing until the third hole gives a little bit of light body then you take out of the second hole to the third hole you put two fingers you push in the third hole and then all the way around and that's how you do it after pushing your full arch you take out your syringe and you wait you put your flask into your closet and wait for a bit or five minutes you set a timer of five minutes why is that we put it on on, on stress we pushed it, we made sure that it was filled, so we pushed a little bit too much and everything is, is comprimated, okay? So it has to, you know, after a good dinner, Friday afternoon, birthday, after that dinner, the trousers are a little bit, and you open up your trousers and it, it really feels right. That's the same with our hybrid composite, uh, hybrid ceramic, okay? Then after pushing, it looks like this. Again, make sure that your screw holes are closed with first or a little bit of Teflon or a rubber band and then a darker wax. Don't use dentine wax because you see, you won't find it as, as, uh, as easy that you think you will find it. So make sure you have uh, blue or dark gray, something like that. <clears throat> After the first press, I call it, we can do a cutback. So we can do three types, okay? This one, after pushing and it's all full, we can just grind, glaze and finish. This is real budget. This is just push, done, finish. Second one is we can do a cutback. 
a small cutback or a big cutback. It's what you like. And you see, it looks like this. And you do a cutback doesn't mean only the horizontal, but also the depth of your tooth. It's like the wave of the sea. We have to make sure that the reflection of the light, it goes into your teeth and it will come back. But because it's like the wave, it will come back in different parts of your dentin and your enamel and, and it plays with, with the depth of your tooth. Okay. After the cutback, we grind it. So we have to use our ceramic primer. We only did a cutback in our anterior region. We can also do a little bit of internal painting. And then we push our base enamel. So you see the first push was with the light body, with one body, and then the enamel is with base enamel. Okay, we have base enamel light and base enamel dark. And then it looks like this. Okay. We grind it. We open up our screw holes. We make sure everything is okay. Also, that the basal side is okay, that everything is really smooth. Don't make saddlebags, please. I think this is maybe a little bit of this is just a demo case that they made. So don't overlap your gingiva it's really bad make it have with it has to push into your gum and it has to be like an egg in sand okay otherwise this could be a garbage uh, can and uh, if you want to kiss that patient with a big saddlebag uh, no it's not uh, the type i would like to do <clears throat> then we grind a little bit on the gingiva side we use again our ceramic primer and then we will uh, make our gingiva. Also, last week I talked a little bit about uh, biotypes and biological width. This is the part where it's getting very important. We have to keep it simple and we have to know the difference between thick and thin biotype. Why? because the gingiva and the papilla are different. With the thick biotype, you can read also, it's darker from color. The papilla are lower in between the teeth. The papilla are also more rounded and the gum can handle more pressure. That's really important when you are making your substructure. So your doctor has to say, okay, we are going to make an implant job for a thick biotype because the the gum seat it has to be under pressure otherwise the gum will go down <clears throat> and if the gum goes down our three millimeters biological width will always be the same if the gum go down the bone will follow so the bone also goes down because the three millimeters will be there after retraction of the gum and there are many cases of they thought it was perio implantitis that it was bad support or that the pocket was more than three millimeters because they say okay the implant has to be there but if the patient had a natural pocket of five the the nature will say oh sorry guys but i have to go down too and then they thought okay this is perio implantitis but it has to be nature so before we extract our natural dentition we have to make sure if it's, of course, not a pano case, paro case, then <clears throat> we measure the pockets, the, the healthy pockets. We know is it three or is it a little bit more? Because after that, we know where the implant should be and what's the biological width of that patient. In general, most of the time, it's three millimeters. If the pressure is not good on the gum, if it's too much, the gum will go. Is it too low, the gum will go. Think of a belt in your trousers. For a thick biotype, <clears throat> we will start with the darkest gum. And the darkest gum in Gradia Plus is the number one. And you just make a sausage. I make a sausage like this with a glove. Use a glove, please, because everything that's smaller than five microns will go directly into your your blood system and it will poison you in a very slow way that's the reason my partner and and my 
kids don't like this, but that's the reason why I don't like M&Ms. You know, the M&Ms, it's really nice. I, 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 I'm really fond of M&Ms, but the chocolate won't melt in your hand. Why? Does anybody know why? There is a small titanium oxide layer on M&Ms, and that make it, makes it for you not melting the chocolate in your hands. But the titanium oxide layer, it's smaller than five microns. So <coughs> an M&M's in your mouth, the titanium will go away, but it's smaller than five microns, so it will go into your blood vessel and you're getting poisoned by eating M&M's. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. The second thing I do <coughs> is I layer a CLF part and the CLF I layer just underneath the cervical area of our of our tooth or teeth. Why? That part of our gum is also fluorescent. So our teeth is fluor our tooth is fluorescent, and also the beginning of our gum is fluorescent. So we have to make connection with the tooth and the gum. And you see the breaking of the light with gum with CLF or without CLF is totally different. Then we make with the number two, the number two, you can say that's the Switzerland of the, the gum of GC. It's neutral, okay? It's laying there, you can land a plane on it, but it won't tell and it's, it's not dark, it's not light, it's something in between. So we have the dark one, we have the CLF, and then we apply for our papilla side, our number two. And then on top of that, to create the chameleon effect, we can make some parts of the number three. The number three is the most lighted one, the most light one, okay? So with three gum colors, we create a chameleon effect and with the CLF, we implement the light and we can make the breaking of the light in a different way. And then you can place a little bit of what you like. What I personally don't like is the, the real reddish paints. We also have red in our uh, portfolio, but I like more the cream and then a denting color to make the, the nerve and the blood vessels and a little bit of bluish. So I will always use cream, denting color, and blue. And with that, I will make it. And after that, I can close it or with CLF to add again a little bit of CLF or gently, gently polish it with uh, the diamond paste. And then it looks like this, okay? It takes you for for a full arch, I think, about one hour. When you're finished with everything, you have to use the air barrier or anything that has glycerin in it. And then you final cure <clears throat> for three minutes and then you're home free. The other biotype <clears throat> is the team biotype. <clears throat> it's lighter from color, it has higher papilla, the papilla are more, more pointed and can't handle a lot of pressure. So for your substructure, if your doctor tells you it has a, a tin biotype, make sure that your structure has some kind of a tulip shape and that you don't push too much in the part one, one millimeter under the border of your gum and then on, on uh, towards your implant don't push a little bit but not too much and then you do the same sequence all over but you start with the number three the lightest one also a sausage also the clf also the number two and a little bit of number three i always use the three uh, different colors I add a little bit of A, a little bit of cream, and a little bit of blue. And then it looks like this, okay? 
And then, okay, I overdone a little bit the papilla of the tin biotype, but to make the difference, the papilla of a tin biotype are much longer and pointy. For a thick biotype, it's rounded and higher. Okay, for this is based on the European colors of, of our patients. Of course, for, for the colored people, for the Indian people, for, for the, the true Mexicans, it's a little bit more violet, more bluish. But if you see the patient or ask your doctor also for communicating about the gingivac color. Sometimes we look at an implant job and it really looks nice, but it, something is wrong. And most of the time, it's the pink aesthetics that are not connecting with the patient. So the teeth is okay, the tooth is okay, the teeth are okay, but the gum, it's not that okay. And then the whole work is, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm satisfied, but I don't win a prize with that, okay? Make sure that you play with the light, okay? It's really important that don't make it too smooth, make it a little bit like the waves of the sea, make kind of a chameleon effect. It's really important that you play with everything. Sorry for my pronunciations, but no balls, no glory, okay? It's better to fail once and to learn about it, then don't try to push yourself, make it too sweet, and then everything looks the same. Please try. This is this is this material is so good and so easy to handle that you you still have the time to have a, re, a redo. We don't like that, of course. We never like that. But if we don't use some stuff that we don't know or test sometimes, then we will never learn a thing. Okay. What I really like is uh, my central my central one in uh, a shape this is this was made only with uh, light bodies just to see the difference the buccal side the vestibular side was with uh, the heavy bodies and the uh, palatal side was with uh, the light bodies okay that's really easy to clean it's very close and it goes uh, really fast then air barrier over all your structure after the air barrier you have to primer it again again ceramic primer if you want you can add some more chroma or bluish or or yellowish or orange whatever you like but again on the outside if you work on the outside with luster paints you have to dilute it a little bit <clears throat> and then you can make whatever you want. Looks like this. Always, please do this. Always check your screw channels because if you work with a cutback technique, your enamel is very transparent and you won't see if there is a very thin layer. So what I always do is open one definite screw and I test every screw hole. and. 10 or 15 percent i have to grind a little bit into the screw hole because there is a little bit of enamel went down in the screw hole you don't see it but it's there and what does that mean that the screw won't enter completely and the doctor won't see it he will put it in the mouth and then we we have a problem by screwing it and that's a real pity for this whole workflow okay so we start with our uh, test case our wax up we make our job and then we have our end result like i said this is the demo case i will show you two or three actual cases this is an actual case there is only one but i told you you can do it in uh, three different ways so the first way is to completely push it paint and done that's the basic one the second one is to push it cut back at enamel and done you can do your cutback only on anterior or also posterior region but everything in the shadow zone until the fifth the four and a half you have light but after that you don't have light or the patient should uh, should be uh, julia roberts 
but any other patient has a laugh line until about four and a half, maybe five. And the shadow won't make it necessary to use any enamel on top of that because we already are using a light body dentine that, like I said, was a transparent dentine. But this one was posterior region and gingiva is gradia plus and anterior is lissy because of the screw holes you see here <coughs> are uh, in a very bad position and you will think uh, there is not enough retention but it went underneath the gum also i placed the the lissy crowns with some wax on top of my structure i add a little bit of wax on the cervical area i made my gingiva work steam cleaned because of the wax i could retract my uh, lissy bridges it were two bridges of six uh, of two of three i'm so sorry so two bridges of three and then i looted the bridges when the patient was already had a structure in his mouth and then i had a little gap <coughs> of the gum and my lissy crowns it was primered at a little bit of flowable to make it closed completely closed closed between the dentition and the gum and the patient was home free same case with this this is also posterior uh gradia plus and and uh gum also gradia plus and uh anterior region are six individual crowns of lissy and this is uh, a budget one this is only pushed with a light body and then paint it on and add a little bit of uh, gum. Are there any questions? This is already the end of the presentation. So please give me your questions. After these questions and after we said goodbye, I can start the movie. I will start the movie and it takes about 15 minutes to make sure to, to show you the whole workflow, but then with a little bit of movement and some uh, music on top of that so you don't have to to uh, listen to my annoying voice but you can just show uh, look at the movie bob uh, thank you very much I, i've got a question from henry um, yes. he you referred to the fish mouth concept yeah um he says he's a chromi technician so uh, Maybe the fish mouth concept is different to chromies or to ceramics. So, uh, why don't you explain explain the fish mouth, <clears throat> please? What what I what I mean with the fish mouth? So this is my molar, and this is the top of my occlusal. And when you look like that on a molar, it looks a little bit like this. So the the top part of your occlusal surface is the fish mouth. So if you put a pencil and you you, uh, you paint with that pencil on your molar, you will see the cusps and, and those cusps will make you a fish mount. And we call a fish mount the, the, the highest line of your occlusal surface. That's a fish mount. Yeah, that's, uh, I was, uh, that's basically what I'd answered him. I was just afraid it might be different in your opinion, no, no, no. but I think we, we're thinking along the same lines there, so that's great. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, there's something else coming in. Just let me check quickly. Um, oh, it was just a comment. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. Uh, a new experience for me, very informative. Uh, wow. So you can tell one of my one of my clients said thank you very much. Uh, thumbs up, uh, guys. Are there any other questions for Bob uh, now that we have him before we move on to the uh, the video? Yeah. I, I, I want to make sure that, that you understand with, with this system, you can do a full arch. You, of course, you have to do your trying and you can do your trying with exocat or uh, analog way. And, and that's the heaviest part of the job to make the trying perfect. But when the trying is perfect, trying is perfect, you just copy your trying and make your substructure. And then from the substructure until finished work with waiting time within a day. And when you have experience, within a half day. 
so <clears throat> the balance maybe maybe the composite is a little bit uh, the hybrid ceramic is a little bit more expensive than our competition but our working time is so much reduced that at the end we 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 earn more money so we have to think working time and product and and yeah predictability that's the most important part of of all this system i think is the predictability of course if you make a lousy wax up the flask won't make it nice okay it will come out how it came in so a lousy wax up will make you a lousy implant job a nice wax up is a nice implant job <clears throat> How, um, just speaking from a, um, uh, a technical point of view, if you didn't have CAD CAM, uh, you can do the analog version, you do the wax up and make your substructure accordingly. Is, is that how you would then do it? Um, you have a, have a manual try and in the mouth of yeah. the substructure yeah. with your teeth in place and then flask it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can, you have to do it uh, uh, fixed in the mouth. But yeah. what, what we did then, we made, uh you know the the locator stuff or yeah. or even the healing abutments let's say i, I had a, had a client uh, wanted on, on uh, locators and one on healing abutments if you ask your dentist to have two long healing abutments can you mute, mute your uh, your uh, computer one for a minute please if if you have two long healing abutments you place them in the mouth on that, you make a, a composite uh, bite index. On that bite index, you make your wax up. Okay, I I work with implants since '93, so I I, I did a lot of uh, analog wax ups, and because you are using the the healing caps, you can without grind without uh, screwing, you can fix them in the mouth, the, the same height of healing caps were on the patient's mouth. And then because of a healing cap, you know how it looks, it looks like, like this. And then it's it's fixed without, without uh, screwing. And then you have to make a stable study in the mouth. If you just do a denture and then open your mouth and the teeth are falling down, you don't see anything. And then, you know, dentists, they say, hey, 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 it looks like this. And then you can finish the work and your horizontal plane is like that. And the dentist will say, mm, yeah, yeah, you, you did it wrong in your articulator. No, 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 you did the wrong bite. So make sure if you work analog way, the nicer your, your uh, teeth are that you're working with, the faster you can go to your end result. If you make a cheap teeth, you have to grind a lot into your Gradia Plus to make a nice substructure. And Gradia Plus, it's even tougher in Gradia Plus to grind than in ceramic. So I suggest analog way, make yourself a really nice setup with uh, a nice composite teeth, tooth. And I use the candelor range. I really like the candelor range of, uh, of teeth. And then make sure that it's stable in the mouth and then you're home free. It's the same workflow as this. The only thing is that you don't have a picture of uh, ExoCAT vision, but you have a picture of a real nice setup of uh, wax. And, and that, that works completely perfect. But once you've done that analog um, setup, how do you then um, manufacture your frame within that setup if you don't have digital? Yeah, if you don't have digital and pre-digital, what we did, I think I have somewhere pictures we made, and that's old school. Yeah, I'm, I'm becoming 50 next year. So we did our substructures always in gold. And then UCLA abutments, and then we melted our gold, and then we had our substructure. But if you, if you now work without a scanner in your lab, if your wax up is done, you can send it to a milling center and they will scan your wax up and on and because of that wax up they can make you a substructure 
in any type of but we like to use the extra cutway because it's very simple and it's very fast so you can do the combination the problem by manual with the analog way is that titanium not many guys have uh, a titanium melting device and it's also it was hot 10 years ago before digital was really uh, everywhere but now <clears throat> it's almost not people that work with uh, cobalt chrome on implant jobs that's really not good for the patient because you don't have adhesion so if you now work analog you can i will suggest participate with uh, a collaboration of uh, a good milling center and uh, make your substructures in titanium if you work on abutment level I don't mind that you do it on uh, cobalt chrome because the patient has his adhesion with his uh, abutments. Is that uh, enough as answer? Anyone? <laughs> Michael, your, uh, your microphone is still muted. <laughs> there, you go. Sorry, there we go. Sorry, yeah, um, yeah, that explains it very well. Um, uh, that 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 was one of the questions I had. Um, I hope there's, if there's anything else you guys need to ask, please feel free. Now's your chance. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot. Uh, I know you're taping this. If you have questions in the nearby future, please send it to Henry or or Michael or Brian. They can send it to me. Uh, after Friday, I will be on holiday for two weeks, but I will really get to all the questions and I will try to give you a right answer. I can only do my best. And if I don't know it, I will ask on product management, like for you, Ish, I will really go uh, to uh, Jonas or Diedrich with your question to make sure that the radio opacity is uh, as, as I told you. Okay. If this... Uh, if there are no more questions, I really want to thank everybody for your time. It's really nice to do this and to get this platform of the people in South Africa, of uh, Wright and Milners and GC. It's always a pleasure of doing this because I'm just one of the technicians and, and it's really nice that I can do this. I want to thank you and hopefully we will see each other in the nearby future in uh, real life. So thank you Absolutely. so much. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank you and Michael as well for your time and your effort and your input. Um, also, uh, the delegates, if you've got ideas of what you want us to talk about, get Bob back to do another webinar or get in touch with us. Get in touch with myself or Henry or Eileen in Cape Town. Um, yeah, we, we opened it. Um, it's a very, very easy platform to operate. So by all yeah. means. That's fine. But once again, Bob, thank you very much on behalf of the Milner's team from Celeste yeah. and Julian and yeah. on the in the background. Thank you for your help as well tonight. And Mike, once again, yeah, thanks. Always always helpful. It was my pleasure. Okay. I will thanks start well. the I will start the movie. Enjoy it. It's it's about 15 minutes. And if you don't want to see it, you will see on the left top Gradia Plus injection technique. On YouTube, you can find it yourself in a time that better suits you. But I will just start it and I will have, uh, I just heard the delivery boy uh, is there with our dinner. So I want to thank you again. I will start it and then after the movie, enjoy your dinner and uh, be safe, everybody. That's really important and uh, be good for yourself and your family. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Bob. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye bye.
Yes. Yeah. And you don't hear anything now? One moment. Now the video is stopped.